Here, in the National Museum of Romanian History at Bucharest, is a full-scale cast of the Column of Trajan. There are other casts, like the one at the Museum of Roman Civilization at Rome, or the Victorian Albert at London, but this is the most accessible at the moment. And since I'm here, I thought I might as well give a brief tour of some often overlooked details on this most fascinating of Roman victory monuments. The column shows Trajan's victory over the Dacians in two wars fought during the first decade of the second century. Although all of the major battles and sieges appear on the column, they're accompanied by quite a bit of more mundane stuff, like the building of camps and roads. I've always enjoyed these construction scenes because they show details we don't have elsewhere. So here, besides seeing the men at work with axes and mattocks, we have a depiction of their tents. You can see them here as I come a little closer. They're made of leather and supported by ropes, and each sized for eight men. This frenzied battle scene may depict the Second Battle of Tapai, fought in a strategic pass that led to the Dacian capital at Sarmzegatusa. I wanted to focus, however, on the accompanying scene, which shows Roman soldiers setting fire to a Dacian settlement. Here we have one of those famous Draco, that is, dragon banners that the Dacians brought to war. They were hollow tubes and made a hissing as they were carried and the wind ran through them. Also, you can see a row of skulls on spikes probably belonging to captured Roman soldiers. Here, the Roman cavalry are pursuing a band of Sarmatians, a steppe people allied with the Dacians. See how the Sarmatians are shooting their slings as they flee. Both the Sarmatian warriors and their horses are fully covered in scale armor. And in fact, even the horse's eyes are protected. The column is never shy about the horrors of war. Here, beside a scene of Trajan handing out military awards, we see Dacian women torturing captured Roman soldiers with torches. Several pontoon bridges are shown in the column, but this one is nice and clear. You can see how it's a series of boats with a wooden deck laid over it. Above, as the troops assemble, we have a nice shot of the legionary insignia. In this scene, as the Romans prepare a camp before an assault on the Dacians in a mountainous area, a shipment of supplies arrives, including, here on muleback, a series of casks holding wine, a nice reminder that Roman troops received a wine ration every day. The Moorish cavalry, Rome's finest light cavalry unit, charges to the rescue in this scene. Notice how, unlike the Sarmatians, they're very lightly armored with just a shield and a tunic. In several scenes, Roman soldiers present heads to Trajan, perhaps in return for some sort of bounty. In this scene showing the general headquarters, we have a lumber yard with two men hard at work sawing wood amid vast stacks of logs. In this scene, which shows the emperor and his men setting out on the Danube in their fleet, you can see the prows of the Roman ships, which are ornamented, in this case, like the beaks of dolphins. Trajan is often shown offering sacrifice in his role as Pontifex Maximus. I like how in this particular scene, the sculptor took the time to show the protruding tongue of this newly sacrificed bull. One of the most famous scenes in the column is this one, which shows the dedication of Apollodorus of Damascus's great bridge over the Danube. Carried on 20 vast masonry piers over the current, it was about two-thirds of a mile long. If we go closer, you can see, above those masonry piers, the elaborate trusses that carried the roadbed. Here we have two very different units of Roman auxiliaries. In the center of the screen now are Germans, probably from the Rhine frontier region, in their leather trousers. Beside them are Syrian archers, in their conical caps and flowing robes. This part of the column appears to show 
the Roman siege of the Dacian capital at Sarmzagatusa. But nobody has any idea what this thing is. It's probably a siege engine of some sort or other, and some have thought it might have been a sort of portable barrier pushed forward to protect the men as they worked toward the walls. But the jury is still very much out. These are random details, but I think they're representative of how much a closer look at a famous monument can reveal.